The United States is at war. We know what we have to face, and we are ready to face it. I'm fighting to make women equal. The president needs to get his wife under control. It's time all these little chocolate girls know that their lives matter, too. Sometimes you have to forget politics, do the right thing, and trust the rest. They call me Tech God Willy Wonka. Up to my gobstoppers in secrets. And it's all true. I'm talking to someone from the other planet. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this means? Go. Take him. Now. The world's been asking, who am I? It's the last stand, and here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right, it is the last stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport, and our guest today is one of the best welterweights to ever fight. Two-time welterweight champion of the world. He's known as Showtime. Sean Porter, <laughs> back with us on The Last Stand. My man. Hey, hey, you put a lot on that. I know. Absolutely. Well, you did a lot. One of the uh, Yeah. You, you, did a, you did a lot. Listen, by the way, how is retirement going for you? Oh, I love it. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm busy. I'm working. Honest, honestly, man, I'm doing some things that I've had a desire to do for a very long time that I kind of, you know, I'm not blaming boxing, but put, I put some things on hold for boxing and now I'm ready to kind of fulfill those other things that I want to do in life. The itch has it, you're like, ah, I just want to. Very grateful, you know what I mean? You, you calling me one of the one of the best welterweights to ever do it. I'm like, I'm like, uh, he said it, not me. You know what I mean? But at the same time, the way that everyone else responds to me and approaches me and, and all those kinds of things, that's the only thing that gives me an itch to want to come back. You know, everybody's saying, you gave us the best and so on and so forth. For me, I was just in there trying to win and trying to shock the world, you know what I mean? And, and you guys really took to it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna miss shock, shocking you guys. Is there any fight still out there that would bring you back? That's why I'm retired. At this point, I feel like I've done everything that I wanted to do. Uh, I think right after having the fight with Errol Spence Jr. in 2019, it was like, okay, what do I do now? And then Terrence Crawford became the mark. And I believe that he was the last mark for me in boxing, which is why I'm retired. So do you see yourself ever in any of these exhibition fights? Because these fighters are making a lot of money. Yeah, well, you asked me, that, you asked me earlier, you still, how many times you get to the gym? Yeah. I woke up Monday and Tuesday ready. Twice this week, and then Wednesday, I was like, what's that noise? Is this an alarm? Why? Why did I set an alarm? You know what I mean? I, I can't, one thing I can never do is cheat myself. Can't cheat you guys. If I come back, you guys are going to want Showtime Sean Porter from 2020, 2019, and the list goes on. If I can't be that Sean Porter, or I know emotionally, mentally, I can't be that Sean Porter anymore, I can't do it. You know what I mean? So that's the first thing that needs to be answered. Even an you know? exhibition fight. Absolutely. Yeah, because I can't, I can't cheat you guys. I can't cheat myself, you know? When you look back on your career, what are you most proud of? Uh, honestly, man, I'm just, I'm, honest, I'm, I'm most proud that, that I've accomplished every goal that I set out to, 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 to have or, or to, to do. You know, everything that I wanted to do in boxing, I, I was able to do those things. Some things I just was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And as they started to become realized, it was like, wow, I'm actually doing it, you know? So I, I'm just proud of myself, proud that I was able to be who I've been to the sport of boxing. In your opinion, and I want you to give me the truthful answer here, Sean Porter Hall of Famer. I keep hearing it. <laughs> uh, honestly, that was a late goal for me. That was, that was a very late goal for me. I never even thought Hall of Fame until I had an opportunity to visit Canastota. And I was like, yeah, I got I to gotta be here. You know, I did, Marvin Hagler's my favorite fighter. I don't think that's a secret. Got it. opportunities to be this close to this man. And then I got to see what he's a part of. I want to be a part of what he's a part of. I don't know if I'll get in there. Um, people keep telling me I'm going to get in Do there. Do you believe you, from what you've done, deserve to be in there? Truthfully, truthfully, I believe that I've had 
three losses against three of the best guys at the point in time when I fought them. And those losses, I think, if anything, are the, the, the fights that keep me out of the Hall of Fame. Mm. Um, the Hall of Fame's not about integrity. The Hall of Fame's not about your personality or about what you've contributed to boxing. I'm gonna contribute to boxing for a long time. And I'm hoping that those things count, <laughs> even though I said that they don't. You know, so I don't know. Uh, honestly, if, I, if you say, hey, are you going in the Hall of Fame next year? I would say, no, I don't expect to, mm. but I'll be okay with it. Um, you fought Kell Brook, Adrian Broner, Keith Thurman, Danny Garcia, Errol Spence Jr., your Dennis Ugas and Terrence Crawford, all in their prime. Yeah. All in their prime. Why not? <laughs> Do you believe you have the best resume out of any welterweight? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's no secret that I have the best resume. Uh, there's no secret that I fought all, all those guys right there where they were, you know, peaking, if not peaked. You know, uh, Keith Thurman was peaking. I believe that Kill Brook was peaking or just beginning to peak, you know, and the list goes on from there. So, yeah, no doubt I have the best resume. But beyond the resume, my whole thing is resume is cool. But what did you do against those guys? What was your performance like? And I've had nothing but good performances against all of those guys. So I think that that's what makes my resume what it is. Uh, Keith Thurman is now coming back. Can Keith Thurman still be an elite welterweight? Okay. He's got to stay active. Keith, I believe, it, it seems, the, the last few times I've seen him and we've had conversation, it looks like he's ready for a run. This is what I know about the sport of boxing. You have to remain consistent. Any day you wake up and you say, oh, what, what's that alarm? Oh, I don't want to go to the gym. You're starting to fade away from the sport, and Keith can't, af can't afford that at this point. Mm. Um, considering you've been in the ring with all of them, in your opinion, the best welterweight fighting right now is who? The best welterweight fighting right now has to be Terrence Crawford. I think um, there was just a number of things that I saw, felt, sensed the, the whole nine. And he was just, just a little bit better, more than just by everybody I've been in the ring with. Mm. And, and you fought Errol before the accident. Uh -huh. Difference between fighting Errol, fighting Bud Crawford? Uh, you know what, I think and I, I got a feeling Errol would, 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 uh, would uh, he, he would confirm this. But I think coming into the ring, Errol was prepared to beat me at my game. And Terrence was prepared to beat me at his game. Mm -hmm. Mentally, there's a difference. Mm -hmm. If Errol could do it again, I think he'd do it a little differently. Mm -hmm. Outcome may not even be the same. But I think he would try, at least try to do it a little differently. Get in the ring with Terrence again, he's going to do exactly what he did, the way he did it. That's the difference between those two. And if anything, excuse me, Errol's learned from that. Everybody in the world wants to see them fight. Do you believe it will be an explosive fight? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence will be an explosion. I can guarantee it. Because, again, going back to the mentality, Errol likes to be a commander in chief, likes to control the ring, likes to do what he wants to do. Against me, he chose to beat, try to beat me at my own game. Terrence, I'm coming in the ring. This is what I'm going to do. Stop me. You got two guys saying stop me. I, I, you can't beat that. You know what I mean? Especially when you got the speed and the, and, the, and the movement and the power and the strength. All the intangibles that it takes to be a boxer, you got both sides of the ring can, can do it, you know what I mean? And we don't get that very often. It, it kind of, I get a sense that you think Bud Crawford has the advantage as of right now. Your fight against Bud Crawford was all action. Yeah. And, and let's be honest, there were some people who had you up yeah. at the time of, of the stoppage. Yeah. When you look back on it, anything you would have done differently? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, people for a long time um, saying my fight was razor thin with Keith Thurman. Was there anything you would have done differently? I'm like, well, I don't know what I could have done differently. I, I, I did what I could do. Right. And then slowly as I got behind, I was like, oh, yeah, I would have done this. I could have done that. And you kind of always, the further you get away from something, I think you're able to see your mistakes or you could have done something better or, or made some adjustments and improvements. So definitely tons of things. What would you have done differently? Um, you know what? With, with, uh, with both, with Terrence and with Errol, with both those guys, I think that 
um, there were moments where I could have changed my cadence, changed my rhythm, and I didn't do it on the, on the, on that, those marks. Those are two guys where you gotta be on the marks. You know, in TV, they're like, hey, don't move off your mark. Right. You move off your mark against those guys and what happens, happens. You know what I mean? So I'm, I am, I think if anything, probably one of the, uh, the best guys to challenge both of those guys, uh, but also to show you like, hey, you know, even, even one of the best, if you're off your mark, they'll, they'll capitalize. No, and I wanna go back to that Bud Crawford fight because um, I, I thought it was interesting when, when that fight was over, um, your father, had some comments that a number of people had issue with. Yeah, number. A number of people, a number of people had issue with. <laughs> Just say, uh, say thousands of people, <laughs> don't say a number. And I thought it was interesting that even after the fight, you said you didn't expect that from your father, uh, to stop the fight. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> um, many people had an issue because the statement that he said, quote, the preparation, he didn't prepare like I wanted him to prepare. When you get guys to a, when guys get to a certain level, they believe they know what they're doing and don't necessarily take all the information. End quote. Did you have an issue with that's that? That's what he said. That's, a, that's exactly <laughs> verbatim. Yeah. Did you have? You an said end quote. I'm like, dang, he said all that. <laughs> did you have an issue with what your father said? Um, did I have an issue when my father said what he said? Yes. Um, everybody expresses things differently, so he ex I think he expressed it the way that he chose to in the world, like literally, not a number of people, the world uh, yeah. couldn't really conceive what he was trying to say, what he was trying to convey, but I did. There were moments in camp he's saying, you know, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll shorten it, but, you know, he's saying do, do, do 10 jumping jacks, and I'm like, I've been here. I don't need to do 10 jumping jacks. I'll do five. And that's what he means by, hey, guys get to a certain point where they feel like they, they know it all, so on and so forth. It wasn't necessarily a thing of me refusing every bit of training that he was giving me or every single moment there were, there were arguments and bickering or anything like that. But there were definitely moments where I was like, hey, I've been here before. Let's go to the ring and let's get it done. Let's just let's do what we need to do to get to the ring, to get the job done. I definitely think that in the heat of the battle, in the moment, at the end, there was definitely a lot of frustration on his behalf. And, uh, you know, I think he, he may, uh, I don't know if he regrets saying what he said or how he said it or when he said it, but I would imagine that he has to because it left a little bit of a scar, not only on him and not only on me, but us. Yes. And there's, there's always going to be an us. And I think that, that that's kind of where everybody was left, like, oh, man, what's going on with them? Yes. Uh, he, he also said uh, at the, when you, Hey, you got more? Yeah, I got more. I got, more. I got to get into this. Because what he said afterwards, when you, after the fight, and you said you were retiring, yeah. that he said he had planned on stopping it going into the fight. Oh, yeah. Did you have an issue with that? A number of people had an issue with when he said that as well. I, I forgot that he said that. So... Clearly, I didn't have a problem with what he said. Um, you know, again, I think anybody would have a problem with it. And you're probably looking at me like, hey, yo, how, how do you not have a problem with that? I'm 34, man. I've been yeah. dealing with my dad for a long time. Yeah. I, I, get, I, I learned how to read through the lines so long ago that, you know, he says, go put gas in the car. And I know he's, he's really mean, hey, go, go jump on the bike and, and, and go for a ride. Get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I understand what he's saying when he says it, you know what I mean? So uh, we both, we had, we'd have had just two conversations about, you know, hey, what's gonna be the last fight? When, you know, when are you ready to, to retire? So on and so forth, you know what I mean? So I think that he wasn't so surprised when I announced my retirement, but it definitely wasn't, we, we didn't converse, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm gonna do this tonight, yeah. so, you know. Yeah. But somebody said to me today, you know, hey, how you feel about being retired? I said, do I look worried? You know what I mean? I feel very happy and I feel very, again, proud of what I've done in the sport. I'm proud to move forward and do other things. And I think that it was very easy for me that night, no matter what it had gone through, it wasn't for me an emotional decision. It was, hey, I, I was here. I announced when I was here back in 08 and now I'm announcing that I'm about to go. You know what I mean? So that's La all. Last question about your father. And, and this is a hard one for me. Want me to get him? <laughs> you call him up I for you? It's a hard question for me to ask you, but I got to ask you because it seems like everyone asks me this question when they 
ask about Sean Porter. Oh. They always say. They ask you about me. Yes. <laughs> Do you believe that your father has been too domineering over you? And, and they always say, if they feel as if Sean Porter's like a victim in some way. Is, that he, is he, his father living his dreams through him? Has he dominated his life? And what do you say to that? I, I have two kids. I have a four-year-old and one who's almost two. Uh, I do, don't really like them going outside by themselves, even if it's in the, it's in the backyard. My, my, you're supposed to at some point allow the baby to feed himself. I don't like my baby to feed himself because he makes a mess. But I, I do. In a lot of ways, I try to control what's going on. I try to control the environment and the list goes on. People who don't know my father don't understand why he is, was the way that he's always been and is going to be. I do because I know my dad's uh, background. I know what he's gone through. There's a fine line between being controlling, being um, uh, assertive, uh, giving information and, and allowing someone just to do what they, they can do or want to do with the information, the list goes on. Um, my dad always felt like as long as I have my hand in this or I'm controlling the situation, nothing's going to go wrong. That's a, a, that's direct contribute from his upbringing and how he, uh, the things that he experienced in life. So I understand it. Again, there's a fine line and there were moments where I was like, you got to back up off me. Yeah. But then there were other moments where I was like, huh, I'm glad you're here. Okay. You know what I mean? There, um, you know, you, we, we can't tell the future. Yeah. You know what I mean? So definitely at this point, do I feel like a victim? No. Do I feel uh, appreciative? Yes. Do I feel like there were moments where I, I, I felt like a victim? Yes. Mm. Uh, were there moments that I look back where I felt like a victim and I feel appreciative? Definitely, you yeah. know what I mean? So. Um, I, I also thought it was interesting. I think you had made the, the comment that you knew going into the Bud Crawford fight that it would be your last one. Right? Yeah, yeah. Is that, uh, is that true? I mean, you knew, even training for Bud Crawford, this is it. Yeah. There's no more. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm showering um, um, maybe last week, and I'm thinking to myself, I didn't allow that, the fact that I knew that I was going to retire. Yeah, and I was going to say, could, could, you give your, could you give it your all when you know it's going to be your last? And then it was like, you know, when that last push came, was that what, what, did, what did, did me knowing that this was going to be the last fight? Did this affect me? I'm really, I've been analyzing everything for a long time and being honest with myself. I'm like, no, that didn't affect, that didn't affect the way that I performed in the fight. Definitely, I believe that it may have had some effect on my mental approach at some points during the fight and definitely during, during training to get prepared for the fight, yeah. What would you say was your toughest fight? What would I say was my toughest, toughest fight? fight? It's, got, it's Terrence Crawford, hmm. you know what I mean? It was, it, was, it, was more, it was so strategical and so tactical on both ends, you know what I mean? I, I, I hadn't been pushed to that, that point practically at all as a, as a professional. You know, um, even you talk about a guy with Keith, it was like, get him, get him. It was, it was so back and forth. The, the, the mental stimulation wasn't the same. And for me, that's, that's what it's all about. I think the boxing ring, even when, when this can't raise, this, this will get this to raise, you know what I mean? And, and, and this as well. And I think that, uh, that Terrence was, he's the one that pushed me here and here more than just about anybody. Your best performance. What was Sean Porter's best performance? Oh, man, it's, it's, it's close. I, I like to think that it could have been Errol Spence. I like to think that it could have been Keith Thurman. Uh, I think that if you are a avid boxing fan, uh, you, you, you love the sweet science. I think you got to enjoy Errol Spence and Sean Porter, especially where the narrative wasn't, it didn't play out. That, that, that movie did not play the way that the narrative told you that it was gonna play, you know what I mean? So I think I, I like that one the most. Who's the one fighter that you enjoy watching fight now? Um, I, st I started to really enjoy watching Terrence before we fought. Um, I, I really enjoy watching Tank right now. Uh, Tank is, is just so explosive, man. He, he's, he's, a, he's a different kind of fighter. Boots Ennis, um, Shakur Stevenson, hmm. yeah. Uh, anyone that you didn't fight uh, that you really wanted to fight, but it just never got done? I don't think so. I really wouldn't, I wouldn't say Mayweather and I wouldn't say Pacquiao. 
wanting to fight those guys and really, really wanting to fight those guys are two different things. I think in my, in my career, I got to a point where I understood that I wasn't going to be able to fight those guys or I'm, it was very unrealistic for me to fight those guys. I was kind of like, all right, yeah. Did it ever get close? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. I think at one point I was like, let me push for Manny. And then someone was like, no, don't push for Manny. You're going to waste your breath and you're going to put out some, some videos and nobody's going to care about it. And I, I put the heart on it and uh, I felt like I made the right decision with that. Give me your top five welterweights right now. Right now? Um, no order. Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence Jr., Boots Ennis. Um, I don't know if I have a fifth. Hmm. I wish I could count myself. That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, you're retired now. All right. You know, uh, we always let people send in questions. We got a number of them for you. We'll get right to them here. These come from Twitter. Um, Trey asks, listen, I'm a Cleveland Brown fan like you. Uh, are you excited about your new quarterback, Deshaun Watson? I am. I'm, most, I'm excited about him. I, I do my best to, to not watch what's going on uh, with anybody's personal life. And... Uh, of course, that's kind of spilled into the professional life. But just speaking on the field, dynamic, is a great decision maker, is is productive, uh, takes care of the ball, and I think we got some weapons around him that that's gonna really you know help us get the job done. So I think we got a good year coming for us. All right, uh, a couple of years. Chuck uh, asks uh, from Twitter. He says, uh, toughest fight for you uh, was it Brooke? Was it Thurman? Was it Spence? Was it Crawford? I made the Kell Brook fight tougher than it needed to be. Hmm. Um, I think that, that, that I made that fight tougher than it needed to be, but I think collectively it would have to be it would have to be Terrence Crawford. Um, I think physically, whew, physically, Keith Thurman and Errol Spence Jr. Okay. Um, wow. Interesting. Chuck. Uh, Justin asks uh, from Twitter, was Danny Garcia, uh, uh, was the Danny Garcia fight a career defining victory for you on your resume? It was because one of my goals was to win the WBC title. Yeah. And um, the craziest, just the craziest thing, I, I had a, felt like I won the fight, mm. but hearing my name called, it felt a lot like when I had my first son. It was, it was an amazing feeling. Wow. Yeah. Um, Amar asks, what is the one thing uh, you regret about your career or wish you could have done differently? <laughs> the Kell Brook fight. Um, beyond that, I think my dad, my dad always tried to get me to pay attention to the business of boxing. Mm. And I caught on to that late. Okay. You know, my dad, we, there's a saying that he kind of gave to me and I, I love it. It's uh, time is wasted on the youth. And I think when I was younger, I wasted time not learning the business and, and appreciating what he was doing for me and on all of those things. I think near the end of my career, you see me start to kind of push some buttons myself and, you know, kind of be the director of what was going on. And I think it was because I kind of had finally bought into learning the business and knowing how, how to make it move. Uh, Jay Wiz asks, um, listen, why didn't you come into top shape when you fought Crawford, uh, especially when you fought Errol? Uh, why didn't you have that kind of shape um, against Crawford like you were? Against Reading it the way, like, do you think he, he, you think he was typing it the way that you read it? I'm just, I'm just you read it hard. I'm just, it's, what the, it's what the man wants to know. Trust me, I trained just as hard and in some ways, if not harder, for Terrence Crawford. We were actually in the mountains, I think 9,500 feet up. Wow. Uh, uh, training to get ready for, for Terrence Crawford. We didn't do that against Errol Spence. Um, I brought in a chiropractor and I got video. I, I'll send it to you. This guy literally standing on my arms with his, with his heels because that's the kind of work that needed to be done for my body to be ready for Terrence Crawford. I think it was collectively Terrence doing what he did and also me um, getting caught up in a couple of moments in that fight. Mm. Pay for uh, it. All right, we come to the last segment of the show. It is the last stand. I'm going to ask you a series of questions. Just give me the first thing that comes to your mind. All right, here we go. In your opinion, Sean Porter, pound for pound, best fighter in the world right now is? <sighs> you can't count Tyson Fury, huh? Canelo. It's got to okay. be Canelo. All right. <laughs> in uh, hardest puncher you fought? Uh, it's got to be. It's between Spence and, and, uh, and, and, and Thurman. 
You take your pick. <laughs> you take, you take your pick. I did a couple of rounds with Errol Spence. Yeah? Hit you on the shoulder? Hit me in the shoulder, hit yeah. me in the back. He, he got me right there in the suit. And there, it did. took me a week. <laughs> took me a week. <laughs> <laughs> took me a week. I don't think I took a breath for like a week. That's how bad my sternum hurt. Um, toughest fighter, the toughest fighter you fought. Like, you was like, God dang, this dude you know is what? tough. I think while Ugas fights very strong, he, he, he tries to make his presence felt in the ring. I think he tried, he was really tough against me. I think mentally he was dialed in to beating me and becoming a world champion in that moment. I think that that's what made him tougher, mm. uh, makes him make, make, would make him the toughest fighter that I fought. In your opinion, the next great welterweight is? Boots Ennis. Like it. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, you want Sean Porter to be remembered as? Um, wow. I would say I, I, I feel like I'm already there. Um, just someone who uh, gave his all in the ring and out of the ring. And, um, you know, uh, just try to produce positivity and goodness any and everywhere I went. Listen, it, uh, it, it certainly is not hyperbole. Yeah. One of the best to ever do it. Yeah. One hey, of the best. Give me that word again. One of the best. No, hyperbole? Yes. <laughs> it's not hyperbole. One of the best. What did you say? One of the best. But what's the word? It's not hyperbole. In other words, I'm not exaggerating. But that is a word. Yes. That I've never heard before. Okay, there you go. You so, can use that. Because hey, you're you, broadcasting now, you can use I, that word. I, I'm trying to do my best. Porter Way, the okay. podcast. You can I check that out as well. <laughs> Sean <in> <laughs> Porter, I appreciate you. You got it, man. Good to see you. That's what we do here on The Last Stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And I'll tell you what, when it came to the welterweight division, Sean Porter, one of the best. Hyperbole. Exactly. That's no hyperbole. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next week. The United States is at war. We know what we have to face, and we are ready to face it. I'm fighting to make women equal. The president needs to get his wife under control. It's time all these little chocolate girls know that their lives matter, too. Sometimes you have to forget politics, do the right thing, and trust the rest. Call me Tech God Willy Wonka. Up to my gobstoppers in secrets. And it's all true. I'm talking to someone from the other planet. Do you know what this is? Do you know what this means? Go. Take him. Now. The world's been asking, who am I?